Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. For those of you that go into my Discord server, you guys know that there is a section of that server for channel suggestions, where I read your guys' suggestions of things you guys say I should turn into videos. And I admit, I'm pretty slow at getting to a lot of them because it takes me a long time from beginning the like idea of a video to researching it, writing it, recording it, editing it, the entire process with everybody involved, it takes a while. But one of these videos that you guys have requested is about the MLM Mary Kay, one of the oldest and most prominent MLMs. And I honestly, I, I feel like a total dum dum that it's taken me this long to get to this point to talk about it. But hey, we're here finally. So that is what today's video is going to be about. So before we get too deep into the video, I'm going to briefly explain the difference between Mary Kay and Avon, since both of them have been around for a while around the same time, they both involve makeup, and I just don't want anyone thinking that they're just clones of each other with identical problems because they are two very unique MLMs. So Avon for reference started in the 1800s, though they are slowly going downhill as you guys probably saw in the other video. They sell beauty, household and personal care products, and they've got their start with perfume. They're reasonably priced at times and it's kind of average pricing for average products. Now, Mary Kay, on the other hand, exclusively sells makeup. It's higher priced and it's supposedly higher quality too. And they're way more into the idea of doing house parties versus the classic door-to-door -door method that Avon ladies use. In the end, they are both makeup MLM giants that are very old companies, but they each have their own different types of issues. So with that being said, let's dive right into Mary Kay's history and see how they were founded and what makes them so well known and some of the cringy stuff that we're gonna dig up about them today. Let's get into it. So Mary Kay was founded by, well, Mary Kay. Her full name is Mary Kay Ash, and she was like many of the Hunpot CEOs that we've seen come before her, and she got her start selling door to door. Whether it's the guy that founded Herbalife or Avon, many MLMs have CEOs or founders that start this way, just generally speaking. For Mary, she sold books, although eventually she moved on to Stanley Home Products in the late 1930s. Mary noticed that she was being treated unfairly in the workplace. She was getting turned away for promotions or raises that men were getting when she was just as deserving. And hey, I truly believe that given the time frame. But interestingly enough, what baffles me about this is rather than start a company that believes in paying women fairly after everything she had personally been through, she started an MLM, of course. In 2019, The Balanced Small Business wrote, one of Mary Kay's most effective strategies was incentives. In 1969, pink Cadillacs were given to the top sales directors. Diamond B pins were another incentive to keep women striving to do their best. With 37 markets worldwide and well over 350,000 consultants, Mary Kay Incorporated now makes over $1 billion in sales in 19 different countries. Fortune Magazine recognized Mary Kay Inc. with inclusion in the 100 best companies to work for in America. The company was also named one of the best 10 companies for women to work. Her most recent acknowledgements were the Equal Justice Award from Legal Services of North Texas in 2001 and Most Outstanding Woman in Business in the 20th Century from Lifetime Television in 1999. And those are outstanding awards for Mary. I can sort of see where they're even coming from. Mary did encourage women to pursue their goals, business-wise and financially, of course. And I'm not going to say she helped them all that much considering that Mary Kay makes them lose money today, though we'll get to that later. But back then in the beginning, her generic inspirational words weren't quite as generic with less women in the workforce. But the idea that Mary Kay is one of the best companies to work for really, really bothered me. So I checked to see how this was actually determined and how any MLM, Mary Kay or otherwise, could possibly rank so high. As it turns out, the rankings are actually determined by asking employees a series of questions and then evaluating their answers. No numbers, high turnover rates, low salaries, ridiculous income disclosures. I see no mention of that being taken into account. I'm not saying a survey from current employees should not play a part in these best companies to work for lists that Forbes or Fortune or whoever is gonna come out with, but considering that many Huns feel as if they've been brainwashed until they leave, it doesn't actually surprise me that Mary Kay may have won some awards like that in the past. As for their mission statements and what Mary Kay is all about in the present day, I went to their website. On their Our Founder page, they've got this really strange animated lady walking next to the quote, I've often said that we are doing something far more important than just selling cosmetics. We are changing lives. 
That animated character is a little freaky. It's a little weird. Uh, I don't, does she not have arms? I don't know. Is that purple supposed to be a jacket or something? I don't know. And why does the loop of her walking back and forth look so choppy, kind of like a strange horror movie? I got oddly mesmerized and terrified by it at the same time, but you know, I, I looked into it on all the Mary Kay quotes, the, the ones that their executives use and about the About Us page with, you know, less creepy animation. So their executives say, nothing happens until somebody sells something, which I mean, I guess that's a bit of an odd thing for a company that owns their own charity would say, but sure, okay. But then there's a picture, a sign around each person's neck that makes them feel important, quote. And for selling, yeah, that's a fantastic tip. I wonder what they see around their own employees' necks. A sign that maybe says, pay me less than minimum wage, but give me a fancy title and promise that maybe one day I'll have a pink car. Then there's Mary Kay is a unique way of life that provides the brushes, the oils, the pigments, and the canvas on which you can paint your life as you really want it to be. You choose your own colors, your own design, and your own pattern, and you get the point. It's really cheesy, simple, basic quotes that the founder has used, and it's not impressive. On their About Us page, it's also not much better. They strive for helping people and to enrich the lives of women across the world, or so they say. But I don't know of an MLM that's really helped anyone other than its top one to 3%, and sometimes less than that. And other makeup companies, sure, they might talk about empowerment on their About Us page, even if they, you know, have one, but they don't seem to try and sell you so hard on their company like the way Mary Kay and other MLMs will. As for their products, Mary Kay most certainly is not cheap. And don't get me wrong, there's other companies out there that charge $18 for a lipstick, but you better be on some high quality shit if you do. Their semi-matte red lipstick in a classic red color looked just fine, I guess, but I wanted to see the ingredients. Unfortunately for me, I couldn't actually locate the ingredient section. And seriously, am I missing something here? There's an overview, application process, and how it works, but I, I didn't find an ingredient list. Most websites I go on, even MLMs, have an ingredient list directly under the product and in plain sight. And that would be because it makes sense, obviously, but Mary Kay just didn't? I, I don't know. They list a couple of ingredients, oils and butters on the how it works tab underneath the product, but that's not actually a full component list of what's inside their lipsticks. So am I just supposed to take their word on their superior formula? Like there are people with allergies and sensitivities to certain things that go inside makeup. Like that's kind of an important thing to have on your website. And this isn't just limited to their lipstick. It's the same with their blushes, sugar scrubs, all of this shit under key ingredients. They only list like two things, shea butter, sunflower oil, like yeah, That might make it sound all fancy and healthy, but what else is in there? Are you telling me that that is conclusively all you have? You don't have any other like emulsifiers, any, any, anything in there. Like, come on, you can't, like, that's not the full list. You can't really be fucking with me like this. Like anyone who has ever looked at a makeup product knows that those are not the only ingredients and that how they present it, that's not how you present an ingredient list either. Like, I can't say if it's decent or not without knowing what the ingredients are. Like if you're a restaurant and someone says, hey, Do you want a chicken dish? And you ask what's in it and they go, oh, chicken, pasta, and some other stuff. Wouldn't you want to know like, what else is in that dish? Like, what if it comes with a side of mercury, lead, mica mined by children, and a bunch of other shit that's often found in makeup products? It's not listed there, so you wouldn't find it. Thankfully, I was able to find a couple websites that do have some products with ingredients lists. Now, I'm not saying that every single one of these chemicals is horrible and you shouldn't use them. In actuality, a lot of them are safe in small doses and effective for its purpose, since we've seen these in other makeup products before. What is most certainly upsetting about this though is how difficult it is to find an ingredient list in the first place. The fact that I have to go to a different website that isn't Mary Kay, the company selling these products to figure out what is in their products is a little bit sketchy. I'm just gonna say that I don't think this is an arguable point. If they won't even list their ingredients, do you not think that's not sketchy in the slightest? And again, what if someone has an allergy? What if it's an ethical dilemma about what is in those products? What if they're vegan? Like, how do we know any of this? They don't say anything about their makeup. We don't know what's in their makeup. 
are we just supposed to assume because some Hunbot said it's a superior formula? We just go, oh yeah, superior, yeah. You must make these assumptions that it has these things, but we're not gonna tell you if it does or not. What if in those beautiful red pigments, especially like in their eyeshadows and stuff, that there's carmine, which is crushed beetles. A lot of people don't like that based on the principle of what it is and how carmine is made. How is it okay to tell the consumer essentially that they just have to blindly trust this website that is poorly labeling ingredients and I bet their consultants don't know any better. So how is that okay? Now look, to play devil's advocate, of course, maybe I'm wrong, you know, because if you see somewhere on their product pages an ingredient list, you know, feel free to correct me, but I genuinely look through a ton of their products and I didn't see ingredients anywhere. And if it's there and I somehow missed it, then, you know, absolutely that is my bad for making that mistake. But I went through a bunch of boring fucking eyeshadows, lipsticks, uninspiring blushes, and there's no ingredient list whatsoever. The fact that I had to go to a third party website to end up finding out what is in their products is it doesn't inspire confidence. And that's something I wouldn't want to put on my face because I don't know what's in it. Is the shit in there going to break me out? Who knows? Because I don't know what shit is in it. So anyway, let's move on to the good stuff, the lawsuits. One of the first that I found happened actually occurred in 2005. So it has been quite a while from the time they were founded to the time they had a lawsuit. So that is impressive, but perhaps it is a testament to lead on to what the company stands for now. So let's just take a look at what happened. Now, this again is from 2005, so it's a bit older, but this older suit really does show Mary Kay as a company, the character of the company. Now, keep in mind, as I read this article from Pink Truth, that Mary Kay says they are devoted to enriching the lives of women and their families. So now with that little sentiment in the back of your mind, let's dig into this. A Mary Kay sales director is terminated while being treated for cancer and files a lawsuit against the company. The verdict was eventually overturned, but here is a summary of what happened. Claudine Wolf was a sales director with Mary Kay who was diagnosed with breast cancer during a 1997 pregnancy. She was a fabulous 50s director and drove a Grand Am. She says she worked for Mary Kay full time. Claudine was treated for the cancer, and during that time, she did not meet her sales director quotas or car quotas. In September, 1997, she contacted Mary Kay to ask for an exception to the quotas. The company declined, she lost her directorship, and the car was taken from her. She filed an employment discrimination suit against Mary Kay. Her attorney was Angela Elito. Claudine and her attorney claimed that she was wrongly fired because of her medical disability. Mary Kay defended its position that Claudine was an independent contractor and not subject to rules and benefits that might apply to employees. The jury determined that she was an employee of Mary Kay and the company acted with oppression or malice by not accommodating her and her illness. The jury returned a verdict against Mary Kay for $11.2 million in damages. 10 million of that was for punitive damages. And just so like, We get this clear because I know that we've got some spicy hun bots that leave some of the dumbest fucking comments ever in the comment section. Like just, you guys have seen probably on my Twitter or like on the community tab, I post some of just mm, the classics there. But let's be clear about the factual stuff in this case, because yes, as it said, it was overturned later, this verdict, okay? But what did happen was Mary Kay fired this woman and took the car because she had cancer and she was going through cancer treatments and couldn't have the time, probably didn't have the fucking energy because the shit wears you the fuck out and makes you horribly sick. And because of the fact that she was going with like cancer treatments, trying to make herself better, she lost everything with Mary Kay and they fired her. You know, honestly, like when I hear something like that, that totally makes me think of, uh, what, what was that again that we said earlier that Mary Kay is all about? Right, 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 that's what it was. It's uh, Mary Kay says that they are devoted to enriching the lives of women and their families. Yes, yes, when I think of enriching the lives of women and families, I I totally think of this type of example, don't you? That's sarcasm, guys, just please understand that was sarcasm. So with Avon, employees get treated like shit when they get pregnant, and at Mary Kay, it's when they get cancer. (laughs) Phenomenal work, guys. Great job, MLMs, that is most certainly how you empower women, am I right? This is honestly just, it's a fucking joke. Like this is the kind of behavior that really shows that 
this isn't a normal business. I'm not saying that there aren't traditional companies that are just, you know, magic and aren't fucked up because there absolutely are as well. But MLMs use that whole independent contractor title as a reason to treat people like they're dispensable. And again, this woman was working with them full time. She wasn't some brand new hun that did it on the side. This was her job. She even got the fucking car for God's sake. So she was good at this hun bot shit too. Okay, like this is a hun, but at the end of the day, this is a human being too. And regardless how wrapped up she was in this Mary Kay, MLM, sell to your boss babes bullshit, this is still a human being and this human being got cancer. And when the company that was there for her or that she was there for this whole time, when she has a problem, they fucked her because she had cancer. That's ridiculous. That is insane. And I know I got a little emotional there. I just, there, I, it's just disgusting. I literally become at a loss of words for this kind of shitty fucking behavior. But now this is probably the lawsuit that shows how disgusting Mary Kay's moral compass is more than anything, but it's far from the only lawsuit they've actually had. The next lawsuits actually have to do with reselling, other companies taking Mary Kay products and to put it bluntly, trying to get rid of them. Touch of Pink was run on eBay by Amy and Scott Weber. All they did was resell products from former Mary Kay distributors, former Hunbots that didn't want their makeup anymore. And I can sort of see both sides here. Mary Kay obviously does not want their products being sold so cheaply by people that are not advocating for the company. And yeah, reselling is kind of a tricky business with copyright, things like that, blah, blah, blah. However, they kept using the word unlawful when Mary Kay was making these products to be resold. Mary Kay convinced their Hunbots to buy it under false pretenses that every promise that MLMs make about the whole financially independent bullshit and becoming wealthy and taking charge of your life and all of that, blah, 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 blah. They're false pretenses. So when a Mary Kay Hunbot that bought too much product that she thought she could sell and couldn't do it and turns it over to these people to sell it on eBay, and then they get smacked with a lawsuit? Like, what? And you wanna know what the worst fucky wucky about this whole thing was? Mary Kay won. They settled out of court, getting just over $1 million and, and it's done. Like the, the book got closed on that. And again, as per what I usually say, if this was like a one-time thing, sure, that's shitty, but like, okay, maybe there was something more to this that we just don't know, you know, on the outside, since this is kind of a closed sealed thing. However, this is not the one time they only do it. Mary Kay is actually kind of notorious for hitting people with all sorts of lawsuits, even if it's seemingly unwarranted. So the next year in 2009, Mary Kay filed two lawsuits. One was against Yahoo because apparently its email service had advertisements that directed users towards unauthorized Mary Kay retailers. Then they sued Pink Face Cosmetics, which was another eBay seller trying to make money reselling Mary Kay products while still being an independent contractor for them, AKA a Hunbot. Like she was working for them and using eBay to sell products and they sued her too. And even more recently, they've even gone after Ulta for using the term lash love, which Mary Kay apparently trademarked. Instead of merely using lash love in a descriptive capacity, Mary Kay, which operates through a network of approximately 500,000 independent beauty consultants in the United States who market the company's products directly to consumers utilizing among other direct sales methods and personal websites accessed through MaryKay.com, claims that Ulta is suing its Lash Love as a prominent designator for Ulta's kit, meaning that the retailer is using it in a source identifying trademark capacity manner. The descriptive versus source identifying distinction is significant as trademark law only provides protection and thus gives rise to claims for infringement for marks that identify the source of a goods or service. It does not protect uses such as descriptive or decorative ones that do not have source identifying functions. More than just adopting its mark, Mary Kay argues that the words Lash Love appear in bold capital letters on the Ulta box with pink trimming, a color that has come to be associated with Mary Kay products. And that appears prominently on the packaging for Mary Kay products, a further attempt to pass off its products as potentially associated with Mary Kay. Now listen, I've gone after plenty of MLMs for using copyrighted terms before, so I don't wanna sit here and show bias when the tables are turned. If Mary Kay wants to go after Ulta, they do have every right to. I don't believe any kind of conclusion has come to this as of yet since it was filed in November, 2019, but this does just show a pattern of Mary Kay being a little 
bit lawsuit happy when it comes to other companies, but far from thrilled when they are the ones on the receiving end. And speaking of being on the other end of lawsuits, you'd think maybe they'd only have one, right? Well, you'd be wrong. One class action lawsuit in 2015 claims that Mary Kay was unjustly filing their employees as independent contractors while requiring them to buy makeup even if they didn't have the customers to purchase any. As a result of defendant's conduct, the class members have endured significant economic damages, including all the money they needlessly spent on meeting quotas for product purchases, on overpaying for car leases, and paying for their own advertising, on having to pay taxes on overvalued gifts to them, and most importantly, on having to pay all of their social security taxes as if they were self-employed. The suit clearly states that Mary Kay Cosmetics forced class members to pay fixed non-negotiable prices for numerous types of sales and marketing materials, like pamphlets and DVDs, while not allowing them from formulating and selecting their own marketing schemes. If a company hires you as an independent contractor, it is by default easier to take advantage of you. Now there are benefits too, of course, but MLMs are notorious for exploiting those types of positions and using it as a way of legally paying people pennies. There's also a case from 2018 where one lawyer decided to stand up for the eBay sellers that Mary Kay continues to keep suing, insisting they had a right to sell Mary Kay on the platform. I mean, seriously, Mary Kay, you want your consultants to sell products, right? So then why judge them on how they're doing it? It's almost like Mary Kay along with MLMs don't care so much about Hun selling the product so much as they care about selling them the business model. Hmm, I wonder what type of business model fits that mold. Is it an MLM? Pyramid scheme? Is that the one that focuses on not selling product, but selling the people? I don't know, it must just be a blur. Now there's been yet another lawsuit that I find particularly interesting and one that's not just about Mary Kay, but Estee Lauder and Avon are grouped into this as well. Now, Avon, you guys know how I feel about Mary Kay. It should be pretty obvious how I feel about them. Estee Lauder, I'm neutral on. I have a little bit of respect for the role in mica mining in India, but we are about to address the issue as to why I don't have respect for them. So here's the thing about these three brands. They used to be cruelty free. They were in fact, some of the first to sign a PETA pledge promising not to test their products on animals. And I assume most of you know how I feel about PETA. So a pledge from them doesn't mean too much to me, but it did mean something to makeup brands at that time. However, there is no doubt in my mind that Mary Kay, Avon and Estee Lauder only did this to look good in the eyes of consumers and be able to claim their products were cruelty free for some time. However, and here is the big heckin' however, once everyone got to know them as cruelty-free and trusted them, they quietly abandoned that facade because it was never about morals for these companies. Mary Kay wanted to sell in China where animal testing is mandatory. So their statements changed. It was worded ever so slightly differently on their website. However, they were perfectly fine with making a big scene about being cruelty-free earlier on. And it's not as if they announced that they backtracked on those morals either. So is that deceptive? Possibly. Possibly not, it depends how you want to kind of take that into perspective. But is it shameful? Absolutely. And it's shady as hell and it's fake as fuck. It would have been better off to just not become cruelty free in the first place, drum up this big excitement about what they are and then quietly take it away. And people, I'm sure if they became more aware that these companies are no longer cruelty free, they may not be purchasing their products. And let's just, you know, cut the bullshit with Mary Kay. Stop pretending that you care about being cruelty free when you just don't give a fuck. Now, before I continue on into the stories and numbers about their charity, we need to take a closer look at what former Huns have actually exposed about Mary Kay themselves. And I want to point out something very particular about all of this. Because for me, we are about to enter the most rage inducing and ironic moment of the entire video today, okay? So they have a charity that's called the Mary Kay Foundation. And can you guess what it's all about? That's right, ending domestic violence and curing cancer. <laughs> Which isn't that wild because as we mentioned earlier, they literally refused to give one of their huns leniency on her sales quotas for, what was that again? Oh, that's right, having fucking cancer. Like this is such a legit facepalm moment. Like Mary Kay, like hun, I don't have many words here. Like this is, I, yeah, I'm almost speechless about it, honestly. Like I had no idea 
what their charity was about. And after just reading the homepage and knowing about that lawsuit, all I could really do was just like, I, I don't even know, like the sheer nerve of these people. Words mean nothing to them. You can't be all about curing cancer and treating your employees like shit. Like those, you can't do those two things together like that. That is such a bad look for your company. It's ridiculous. Now, it is also true that the foundation has done some good, even donating hand sanitizers and funds to domestic violence shelters. But the thing that really bothers me about MLMs that have charities attached to them is that people buying from Unique and Mary Kay believe it's okay because a fraction of the percentage may go towards a charity. But here's the thing, why not just donate directly to that charity? And why do you have to like circumvent it and buy a lipstick in order to donate? Like you. You don't have to do that. It's okay. You can just do the donation itself. But it's just kind of hilarious that they have this charity that's supposed to help with domestic violence victims and to help cure cancer or find ways to help with researching for cancer treatment and stuff like that. And they just kind of fucked their own employees. I just, I don't know how they thought that was okay, but they did apparently. But a break from how terribly they treat their employees, let's hear from the employees themselves. Now, first we're gonna get into some number crunching, then a couple stories to close out today's video. Now, Mary Kay actually has a pretty decent commission, which is 50%, which <laughs> is no wonder their products are so pricey. So if you want to make $50,000 a year, you have to sell $100,000 worth of products. And that's very simple to calculate. The top Mary Kay consultants, the top 100 that is, are earning somewhere around that from 60 to 160,000 a year, which is not bad, but those earnings are the top 100 out of millions. On average, Mary Kay consultants earn $22 per week. They're better off literally working a single minimum wage shift for God's sake. And as for the stories, well, I've saved the best for last because these are absolutely loathsome. In an article called Mary Kay Consultants See the World Through Rose Tinted Lenses and the Green That's Lining Their Pockets Has Never Looked Brighter, which God, what a great title, but anyway. The article says, not surprisingly, the Mary Kay dogma has everything to do with self-improvement and nobody in the business acts as if they are merely selling makeup. The company compels women to put God first, family second, career third. And many saleswomen say that their involvement with Mary Kay helps order their lives in a meaningful and rewarding way. It all sounds great, but the Mary Kay principles ironically are delivered along with a product that is inherently artificial. Women who use cosmetics are called made up as if they aren't quite real. Is there an essential contradiction in women learning to appreciate their true selves by selling products that freshen and conceal them? It's not liberating, Caker admits. Then again, she says, so what? If the end result is positive, does it matter how you get there? And I mean, yes, it does matter how you get there. And what about peddling makeup is so positive? After reading some of the stories, I can't really find too much to say that's super positive about this company, really. There is an entire website devoted to this. It's called marykayvictims.com. Carrie's story is this. My name is Carrie. I am from Massachusetts. I was driving a pink Cadillac, driving Triple Court Senior Sales Director. I was in Mary Kay for two and a half years. Now in bankruptcy, my Mary Kay opportunity cost my family over $40,000 in credit card debt. I ran into a Mary Kay consultant and acquaintance at a school fair, and she took it upon herself to put my name into her raffle. She called me a few weeks later to tell me I won a free facial and makeover. I booked it with her because I was in need of a new consultant since my current consultant decided to retire from Mary Kay after just one year. After my facial, my consultant asked me to stay as her guest for the meeting. The women at the meeting were also nice, positive, welcoming, and really just supportive of each other. Not to mention most of them were dressed alike, wearing the same suits, jackets, and a ton of makeup and a ton of bling. Carrie joined, wanting to be a part of the group, of course, and was hopeful she found somewhere to belong. According to Carrie, the director saw this and manipulated upon it, becoming part of her upline and convincing her to join. Carrie says that she was told, God brought you to me, and that by joining, you can give your husband the opportunity to retire, since her husband was sick at the time. And also saying, you have been chosen by God to change your situation. And all of this is yikes, just, Yikes, 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 yikes on trikes. Using God's name to make someone join Mary Kay to sell makeup? Like, what the fuck? 
Carrie also stated, I've noticed most of my relationships outside of Mary Kay becoming strained, especially when they weren't supportive of my business or they had something negative to say about Mary Kay. This was obviously upsetting and I would go to my SD for guidance and in most cases was encouraged to terminate those relationships or keep them at a distance. Love them from afar, I was told. Their negativity will not serve me and will be toxic to my business. And I hate to point out the obvious, but that's kind of a thing abusers do. They put distance between you and your loved ones, criticizing them, ostracizing them, like that sort of thing. It's manipulative, abusive behavior is what it is. And Mary Kay's weird cultish behavior doesn't end there. Not at all. Carrie was told, if you listen to everything we tell you, don't question us, be mentorable and coachable, you will succeed. You will need to have blind faith, but I promise you, if you do, you will be at the top. I spent little to no time with my family, missing almost all of my son's dirt bike races. I was told to put on my big girl panties, stop playing dumb. My husband was starting to question the business and our finances. When I would go to my mentors, they would tell me that it was none of his damn business. After all the expenses and chargebacks, there was no money left over to provide for my family. I had lost 20 pounds that I didn't even have to lose in the first place. My self-esteem was worse than it was when I started the Mary Kay journey. My husband's heart broke as he watched two women abuse his wife and finally had the courage to tell me that I was in an abusive relationship and he couldn't watch this happen anymore. Sadly, Carrie's story is far from unique. Rachel said, I chose to make an initial inventory purchase of $600. I rationalized to my husband that if my venture failed, I'd have my own product stocked up for a few years. Directors constantly showered consultants with praise and frequently stated with fervent conviction that they were helping other women enrich their lives. I wanted so desperately to believe that Mary Kay was the solution for me and my family that I did everything my director said. I started to view all the women in my life, old and new, with a sharp eye, gauging their investment potential and likelihood to let me approach them about the company. I went once. The meeting began with a short video produced by our national's husband. I was shocked to see Disney animation when it began. He'd apparently just stolen the footage for his own use. I think it was stolen Disney footage that finally made me see how ugly everything was under the makeup. My director, having been driven into bankruptcy herself, finally quit and I just quietly stopped. I did not thankfully lose very much money. What is most upsetting to me is the false hope I was given. And there's so many other stories of women joining Mary Kay, losing money, distancing themselves from family and or becoming so lost in a pink fog that one woman said she considers her time at Mary Kay a lost year chasing a pink bubble. So many direct sellers and these types of MLM companies exhibit this very, very weird cult-like behavior. They may not be religious, so make no mistake by that, cult behavior is not intentionally religious, but this at definition, it has to qualify as an unhealthy cult. It has all the basic principles of the bite model, which if you would like to revisit that, I did a video called Our MLMs Operating Like Cults or something like that. And it is taking a look at the psychological bite model of manipulation and applying it to MLMs and how they recruit. It's a super interesting video. And on my main channel page, there is a playlist dedicated to these MLM deep dives and it's in that playlist. So make sure to check that out too. So as for my final thoughts, when it comes to Mary Kay, I don't even care at this point if Mary Kay was some fantastic, new, innovative makeup brand on the market, which they're not by today's standards anyway, but if any company is treating their workers like this, allowing this type of environment to thrive and treating their employees who have cancer like they're absolutely dispensable, then they're just not worth my time and they're most certainly not worth my money. Between going lawsuit crazy on eBay sellers, their shady misleading behavior on like product identification and ingredients, and the typical MLM not paying workers in cultish ways, Mary Kay is yet another business that I think we'd all be better off without. So with that being said, that's where I'm going to end today's video. Let me know your guys' thoughts on what I have found today and presented to you guys, and let me know everything positive, negative, whatever. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you want even more from me, including all the sources I used to create this video and where these studies, these lawsuits, these articles came from, all of the sources are in a pastebin link in the description box down below. I additionally have all of my other projects that I work on, all my other YouTube channels, soap shop, blah, 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 blah. Everything is down below in the description box. So thank you guys so much for making it to another video. I love you guys and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Oh, 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 oh,